right, Joey? Here. There you go. You want some? Hi, my name's Emma. I am 22 years old. I am the animal care manager at the Red River X here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Okay, <clears throat> this is where we keep our goats and our sheep. Uh, the way I got this position was by volunteering, um, shadowing a equine surgeon veterinarian here in Winnipeg. And I was just speaking with him, talking to him about how I needed some large animal experience. And he told me about this position that the CEO of the Red River X was looking for someone to take care of his animals. I didn't realize the um, magnitude of the position until I got here. For this job in particular, yes, a big part of it is taking care of the animals day to day. So doing feeding, watering, um, pen and animal maintenance, just giving them some TLC. I mean, these animals are literally pets. They love attention and hugs and snuggles and brushes and baths. So taking the time to do that is a big chunk of the day. <laughs> Go eat. Preparing for the interactive animal exhibit that we have during the Red River X and the fall fair in September, uh, those are big portions of it too. So right now we're doing a lot of cleaning and maintenance and getting um, the exhibit and pens ready. Are we gonna get cleaning? Yeah, let's do it. Bring it in. It's gonna stink, guys, I'm sorry. But honestly, like things come up every day. Like, you know, you come in not expecting to have a baby goat in the pen, but there you go. And that takes monitoring. Sometimes you need to sit there for hours just to make sure that they're going through the proper steps. So this is Joey. He's like Annie's BFF. We did, Joey's a little skinnier than the others. He's actually put on some weight, but um, he's kind of bullied by the other guys. You have to be empathetic because you know, the animals can't communicate any pain or stressors to them. So you have to be, like I said, you know, aware of your surroundings, aware of what could be triggering them or hurting them and be empathetic to their situation. I spend every day, all day with these guys. So it's pretty easy to catch on to when there's like a personality change. So one that I always look for is Joey because he always isolates himself. So when we were inside, I would always find him like peeking around behind a door and I just have to pick him up and put him in front of hay because he just won't do it himself. Seeing the animals have good days is very rewarding. So when you have an ill animal that, like you know, our horses that have laminitis, which is a chronic foot disease that they will have for the rest of their life and can just only be managed, um, seeing them have good days where they're running around instead of barely being able to walk is so rewarding. So that's my favorite part of the job, seeing the improvements from the bad to the good days. This is Matilda. She's the one with the soft tissue injury, so she's kind of on stall rest. Um, it's her back, can't really see it. It's her back left leg. She'll stand with it really pinned straight, and that's an indication of a soft tissue injury. Um, she's kind of like locking her leg to take some pressure off, but the swelling's gone down a lot. It prepares me in many ways. Obviously there's no surgery or anything involved, like any of that practical experience but also just the handling aspect. Like if I ran into vet school never having interacted with a cow, I think that would be quite a shock to the system because they're so different. Okay, sweetheart, okay. You want my sunshine? Got it, you got sunshine. That was better than a vet. <laughs> Heck yeah. Good girl. That was better than the vet. Lots of rubs now. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to go to the is having to, it's this sad moments. So for instance, we had a baby goat we named Henry who was born and he was struggling. He couldn't lift his head. So we assumed he had some sort of neurological disease. He was overall fine otherwise, but he couldn't nurse because he couldn't lift his head. So we were hoping that with some care on our part, so coming in to feed him and bo like bottle feed him, that maybe we could give him some strength. But after three days, we found, I found him the next morning. Um, and he was gone. So those moments are my least favorite moments. Hi. Big man. 
you getting a little sunburn? It's, it's very rewarding. Working with animals is so rewarding and it's free therapy. <laughs> it really is. Like if I'm having a bad day, I will just go sit with the goats for an hour, bring a book, sit with them. And it's, it really does make a difference. You like the chin rubs, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a city kid from like, from the root of it. I, my family has no exposure to agriculture or horses or anything, but I find it sometimes easier to work with animals than with people. Working with animals is an amazing career, no matter how you do it. You're helping those that don't have a voice, which is why I want to do what I, what I want to do. Because, you know, like I said, they can't tell you if they're in pain. They can't tell you if their pen is gross and needs to be cleaned or whatever it may be. They can't tell you those things. So to be able to be the voice for those who don't have one and advocate for their welfare and well-being and their health is very important to me. And if it's important to someone who loves animals, that's a great first step. Like you gotta love animals to do the job, period. So if you love animals and it's something you think you wanna do as a career, vet school isn't the only option, but it's you know a really great option. That's the one that I'm taking, but it's definitely not the only one. There are so many positions in the industry that you could make a difference through. And it doesn't have to be a big difference. It could be, you know, like this small hobby farm with our few animals, but they, their lives still matter and they still need to be taken care of.